Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thanks to all of you for being with us today. Um, Mr. Smith, when ECPO was written many years ago, as you were highlighting in 1986, um, it was also the very early days of email. When I first started working on email in 1989, even then it was still really only used in companies that had it for internal communications. And if you did get an email, folks always downloaded it from a server because capacity in servers was very low. And, um, and they would regularly delete those servers to have room for new information. Um, so it seems clear that some of the fundamental technical assumptions that were made when ECPA was written have definitely changed vastly since then. And I wondered if you could comment on the mechanics of cloud computing today and what legal questions that creates, especially with respect to ECPA. Um, and why can't the courts just shoehorn a kind of all of these today's legal issues into, like the international storage issue, into that old law? Well, I think your question raises an excellent point. Um, a company like Microsoft built its first data center outside the United States only in 2010. So cloud computing and the explosion of cloud computing is really a phenomenon of this decade. That is what has created all of these issues that we're talking about today, and it has created the need at times for law enforcement, quite rightly, to want to get access to information, to content, to email in other countries. I think the fundamental question, in a sense, from a U.S. legal perspective, is that when technology moves forward and the law needs to catch up, as it does here, what's the best way for that to happen? And we would say the best way is for the executive branch, if it wants new power, to come back to Congress and ask Congress to enact it. And when you say when the law was written, it was written actually with respect to the way technology was working then, as opposed to providing intent going forward. Well, absolutely. And the most interesting and telling aspect of ECPA in this regard is the fact that it applied a lower standard to protect email that was over six months old. And that was all based on some thinking in the 1980s that I think barely anybody can remember that most businesses moved their paper records off site after six months. Maybe that was true, but who the heck has an email account that has only email that's less than six months old? The answer is only email accounts that have been open less than six months ago. All the rest of us have email that's older than that, and that just shows how much the world has changed. And with the shift to cloud computing now, more and more of that information is stored on servers. Well, the amazing thing about the cloud, as you point out quite rightly, is now we're not only talking about email, we're talking about all the photographs of our lives, we're talking about all of the other digital records that we have, we're talking about the PDFs uh, that, that in our lives, it's, it's everything that sort of documents what we do every day. And do you think that um, people should have a different expectation of how digital information is treated versus physical information? Is, is there a legal significance to the fact that um, you might have information that's in digital form versus paper form? I think that technology needs to advance, but certain timeless values need to endure. And among these timeless values are the rights to privacy. And every time the American public has been asked, they have said the same thing. They want the data they store in the cloud to get the same privacy protection as the information they store on paper. And I think that's exactly the right point of view. Does anyone else think there's a difference between digital or, or paper in terms of the legal significance and that differentiation? Um, I, I agree with Mr. Smith. I think one of the challenges here, frankly, is um, people sometimes because of the fact that the data moves uh, electronically and seamlessly conflate what is a business record of the provider with what is something that the provider holds as a custodian, so to speak. And to use an example from the banking world, uh, it's one thing to subpoena a bank for bank records, which are the bank's own documents or the bank's own information. It's another thing if you want to get into a safety deposit box. The bank doesn't have a limitless right to enter the box, and therefore you need a warrant for the box that's separate and distinct from a subpoena for the business records. And because electronic uh, data doesn't neatly fall into that obvious category, categorization, there's a tendency to conflate the two, but I think as, as Brad says, that the principles ought to be the same. I would just say, the two factors that strike me as the most significant here are, first, the 
incredible amount of digital data that is now created and available. Digital dust or digital footprints of your daily life are everywhere created. And they are also, second point, stored with third parties in a way that they did not used to be. And so I find myself in strong agreement with Mr. Smith uh, when he had his 1912 adding machine in front of him. It is, I think, important and appropriate for Congress to look at the All Writs Act again. I would go further and suggest you also consider the technical assistance provisions in both the Wiretap Act and FISA to clarify exactly what kind of assistance is going to be required from third parties in making digital data in the clear available to the government. You know, at one extreme is legislation now pending in the UK, which, if I read it correctly, would essentially allow them to compel providers to push down widgets, malware, in bulk uh, across a network and all users on that network. And at the other extreme would be, you know, essentially no compelled assistance. There's going to be a middle ground there, and I think Congress is the appropriate institution of our government to come to grips with that. I thank the gentlelady. And with that, we go to the gentleman. Sorry, my time expired. Yes, I'm afraid so. We now go.